Hello and welcome back to GI 101. My name is Dr. Adriana Lazarescu and I am your host for this episode. With me in the studio today is Dr. Dan Sadowski. Dan, what are we discussing today? Well, Adriana, over the next couple of episodes, I would like to discuss some of the therapeutic options that are available for patients with GI motility disorders, namely the prokinetic drugs. In particular, I would like to help our listeners understand the mechanism of action of these medications. Sounds great. We have wanted to do this for some time. But first, if we are going to talk about drug mechanisms, we should discuss the enteric nervous system, since that is where prokinetic drugs mainly exert their effect. Absolutely. And I have to say that most students find the enteric nervous system very confusing, but I hope to be able to simplify a very complex process. Okay, so gut motility and the enteric nervous system. How does it work? So the most basic aspect of gastrointestinal motility is the peristaltic reflex. Let me describe how it works. Have a look at the generic piece of gut shown on this slide. Now, think about what has to happen in order for the food bolus that you see in the lumen to move distally in this piece of gut. First, you need a contraction in the gut smooth muscle proximally or upstream from the food bolus to move it distally. And it would be also helpful if there was a relaxation of the smooth muscles downstream from the bolus to permit easier passage of the food. In fact, this is exactly what happens all the time in the gut. This upstream contraction ahead of a food bolus and downstream relaxation of smooth muscle is the most fundamental aspect of gut motility, and it's called the peristaltic reflex. How does the enteric nervous system generate the peristaltic reflex? Okay, so it turns out that distension of the gut wall by the food bolus is the primary initiator of a neural reflex arc, and this arc propagates peristalsis. This distension stimulates sensory nerve fibers in the gut wall, which then fire onto intermediary neurons. The intermediary neurons behind the food bolus synapse with cholinergic nerves, that is, nerves that release acetylcholine, or ACH. And as you know, ACH is the most powerful stimulator of smooth muscle contractions. Conversely, the interneurons ahead of the food bolus synapse with inhibitory neurons that can release a variety of neurotransmitters, such as VIP, nitric oxide, and ATP. These neurotransmitters are potent relaxers of smooth muscle. And so, in a nutshell, that is the peristaltic reflex. Distension of the gut lumen by a food bolus causes proximal muscle contraction, mediated by ACH, and downstream relaxation of smooth muscle, mediated by inhibitory neurotransmitters like VIP, nitric oxide, and ATP. I should also mention that this reflex is considered to be local because it can occur in the gut autonomously. So we have a number of medications that have either cholinergic or anticholinergic activity. How do these affect the peristaltic reflex and gut motility? That's an excellent question. And we do have a number of medications that we consider to be cholinergic, such as bethanicol, physostigmine, and neostigmine. And as you might expect, these drugs enhance the contraction arm of the peristaltic reflex. And thus, the common side effects of these drugs are cramps and diarrhea. Conversely, there are also many drugs that have anticholinergic activity, such as the antidepressants. These drugs commonly cause constipation as an adverse effect. Okay. So, Dan, perhaps you should talk a bit about how the peristaltic reflex is regulated, as this will be relevant to our discussion of prokinetic drugs. Right. So, as you can imagine, it's important for the body to be able to up or down regulate the peristaltic reflex depending on various factors. For example, in situations of high nutrient load, the gut will need to suppress the peristaltic reflex in order to allow more time for absorption. So how does this happen? Well, it turns out that there are a number of mechanisms that the body has to either enhance or dampen the amplitude of this peristaltic reflex. 
and I would like to touch on three of the most important, serotonin, dopamine, and the endogenous opioids. Let's talk about the serotonin system. So serotonin is probably one of the most important regulators of gut motility, and it's released from the gut in response to various stimuli, and it has two important receptors, the 5-HT4 receptor and the 5-HT3 receptor. First, let's talk about the 5-HT4 receptor. When serotonin binds to this receptor, it greatly enhances ACH release from the cholinergic nerves, thereby increasing smooth muscle contraction and forward gut motility. Conversely, when serotonin binds to the 5-HT3 receptor, it works more on the relaxation side of the reflex arc. Incidentally, the 5-HT3 receptor is also involved in gut secretion, as well as pain transmission from the gut. And we will come back to these aspects when we talk about the 5-HT3 receptor antagonist drugs in our next episode. Let's talk about the dopamine system. So dopamine is released by sympathetic nerves, and its main receptor in the gut is the D2 dopamine receptor. Think of dopamine as a break on the entire peristaltic reflex. When dopamine is released in response to sympathetic stimulation, it reduces ACH secretion by cholinergic nerves, as well as it leads to reduced activity in the VIP, nitric oxide, and ATP-containing nerves. Last but not least, what about the endogenous opioid system? Right, so endogenous opioids are released by the gut in response to a number of stimuli. And there are three main opioid receptors, delta, kappa, and mu. Delta and kappa receptors are found mostly in the CNS and mediate visceral pain sensation. Mu receptors, however, are found in the gut, among other places. Think of endogenous opioids as another braking system that the body has to suppress the peristaltic reflex. When endogenous opioids bind to the gut mu receptor, ACH secretion is greatly reduced. So Dan, it sounds like the enteric nervous system is also very important for digestive function. Absolutely. And I also want to point out that the enteric nervous system is not only responsible for gut motility, but it has a number of other important roles as well, such as modulating fluid secretion, for example, gastric acid production, regulating blood flow, and influencing nutrient absorption. Thanks, Dan. That's it for today. Perhaps next week we can discuss how prokinetic drugs can influence the function of the enteric nervous system and improve patient symptoms. Okay, let's do that. See you next time. Bye. Bye.